you've got to remember in those, day, in those days, um, you didn't record with a computer and you didn't have a click track. You didn't play along to a beat and a tempo. You just got all the musicians together in the room and they played it. And, you know, if it was too fast or too slow or if there was a mistake, you did it again. Um, in fact, every XTC track I've ever done is with no click and no, no, um, no, no computer, no regimented stuff. It was always capturing the live take, you know. And by live, I don't mean a concert live. I mean, as, for me, the magic happens with music with as many people in the room at the time playing together. And although it might be a shambles, that's what the producer does. The producer sorts out the shambles. But you still got to have people in the room. I probably got that from way back Phil Spector and George Harrison and stuff, where you just get a lot of people in the room, and if someone keeps messing up, you turn them off. <laughs> it's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah. But the energy in the room with more people is so much better than someone sitting there with the headphones on, listening to a drum machine and, you know, trying to keep in time and then spending three hours on the computer adjusting it all and stuff. Forget that. You never, even though you get there in the end, it, it never translates. You know, the listener doesn't get it, you know. It's like, watching, look at, like, it's like taking a photograph, really. You know, you can take a photograph and bodge it up in, in, um, Photoshop, in or, Photoshop. Yeah. Or you just take that snap. And I'm sure you've all got photo albums and you look at your best photos and they're usually a snap. They're a one-off, untouched thing. Mm. And it's the same with recording, I think. John, do you have to like a band to produce them? Or can you produce somebody that you don't really like? No. No to which? No, no, you don't have to like them or...? Uh, I, I wouldn't produce them unless I liked them or unless I felt I could contribute something or I felt I could, I could give them guidance. I mean, you know, if I don't like the music and they're in the studio and they do a take, when the music stops and it all goes quiet, they're going to look at me and say, what do you think? And if I don't like them, I'm going to go, I don't like it. <laughs> so there's no point in carrying on, no, even starting it, really. Is there something about, like, the manicness in which bands were, were expected to work in the 70s that, like, was a great thing? Or, or do you have more more complex feelings about that? Well, I, I've done it myself, and one of the worst experiences is spending a year doing an album. I mean, I spent three years doing the second Stone Roses album, and it was fucking hell, you know. Um, no, I, I'm not saying, you know, do it in two weeks kind of thing. I mean, most records, when I look at my diaries, most records I do are like 50 days, 54 days. It depends now because it, the whole technique has gone. It's, I'm talking 54 days, 12 hour days in the studio. I'm not talking about sitting in your bedroom with the headphones on doing the vocals and that kind of thing. It's, it's all changed now with the technology, like, you know, people sending files to each other rather than assembling in a room and, you know, almost rather than having a producer. You know, a lot of bands think, oh, I can produce myself. That must be easy. Anyone can do that, you know, but you try it, <laughs> you know. I, it depends on what studio. Rockfield's great because you can live there. It's one of the few places where you can go residential. I mean, I, I like the residential thing because you're all under the same roof. You don't have to get the bus home and you don't get in late in the morning and you can, you know, go to bed when you want and get up when you want. So I like Rockfield and residentials. Although I do like Rack Studios in, in London. Uh, mixing, I don't know. I don't know now. Mixing's all different now with computers and stuff and plugins. So the main thing about mixing is the monitoring really is the speakers and what you're listening to. If you know, if you trust and know what you're listening to, then you should get a good result. And usually you find bad mixes are because of bad monitoring, not really hearing. You could say there's two things that make the the sound of a band is the vocalist and the, and the drummer. The vocalist and the snare drum. <laughs>